Like I tell everyone, I think I would, this is the one truck that I would probably pull the drivetrain out of and put it in another truck and I would mount this on the wall before I would sell it. My name is Dave Shulman. I'm here in Orlando, Florida, uh, just north of Orlando, actually, in a little town called Lake Mary. And I founded the club Acrophobia back in 1998. So it's 21 years now that uh, we started actually right here in a little McDonald's parking lot. Growing up, I actually was not around cars at all. I was around model, model airplanes. My whole family is well known in the model airplane field, and uh, my grandfather was a pioneer in that industry. My father worked in that industry. Me and my brother grew up doing that. Um, we started competing, winning competitions. My brother became national champion. Um, and once I got to the car age, you know, high school and stuff, I went, somehow I got started going downtown Orlando and I started seeing all the, back then it was a lot of mini trucks, um, stuff like that, and there was, uh, a buddy of mine, I ran into this guy at a car meet, and his name was Ken, redheaded guy. I'm still friends with him today, Ken Bowman. And uh, so he was in Mini Madness at the time, or not not even in Mini Madness. He was like joining them or something. They were starting a Orlando chapter, and anyway, he had a Toyota with a topper and ground effects, and you know, split like drip paint job on the side and everything. And we ended up going to Pigeon Forge. Uh, back mini truck nats 93 I think it was and uh, I was in high school still and I went with them and with mini madness and man we must have had 30 trucks in a line from Tampa all the way to Pigeon Forge we all had CB radios uh, back then and so we all talked to each other all the way up just you know raising hell with everybody uh, stayed in a big chalet on the mountains. There was like two of them, two or three chalets next to each other we got. And it was a memorable trip, obviously for me, kind of broke me into that scene. Um, it was funny because when I first met Ken, I wanted to lift my truck. I had a, a two wheel drive Ford Explorer. And then I, after many truck nats, I was like, hell no, I'm lowering it. And I did some research, found back then it was uh, suspension techniques made the kit and I wanted 17s because they had just came out and I couldn't afford them. So I worked and worked and saved and saved and bought the lowering kit and I bought 15, 15 by seven Boyd Ninjas for my four door Ford Explorer. And it was white, I had tan leather and it just snowballed from there. And at that time, airbags were just coming out. Body drops were like few and far between and I wanted to body drop it. And then I realized that the truck is old. I've dr I drove that thing from right off the lot when it was brand new in 92. This was 2008, or no, 1998. And I put like 130,000 miles on it. And I never went out of state. It was all like local. I mean, I drove back when I was in Mini Madness, I would drive to Tampa, which is an hour and 20 minutes every Thursday for the meeting. Instead of body dropping the Explorer and everything, I decided I need to start over because the bodywork and paint. And I really wanted a full size. And I really loved the Fords, the way they looked and everything. And they had that blue color. And there was a company in California called Full Effect that was making kits and everything. And they made drop kits. So I scoped out the truck. I had the whole plan. And first thing my dad says is, you're not going to lower this one, are you? I said, uh, no. Meanwhile, I already had the kit like on reserve and I was already looking at 17 inch Budniks and all this stuff. And I actually bought the truck and like the very next day I had the kit ordered for the drop kit. And I bought a five seven drop. We put it all on and the damn thing was so low that with the 17s on it, that it actually, I was sitting at a stoplight and I heard this <laughs> as I was driving home from the shop that installed it, the drop kit. And uh, the cross member was eating through the drive shaft and just and it went right through the drive shaft at a light and uh after that that was a good excuse to to work harder and get 20s so and bags <laughs> so
So that's what happened next was I was bagged on 20s and it was one of the very first sets of 20s uh, around billets at least. Um, and that, that was like 99, I think it was. And that was kind of before a lot of people, that's kind of when the truck came together, when the club came together, when everything came together, when they realized that, wow, he, he's got a nice truck. He's, you know, I was, instead of just being one of the crowd, I was kind of started to become a little bit different, you know, where people would be like, whoa. You know, I would roll into a show. I still remember I rolled into Slamfest there with the whole club and, and then parked my truck and everyone was just, that's when I met Courtney uh, Hallowell and uh, they shot it, he shot it for a feature. We did rolling shots there and everything else. And that was, that was awesome. Um, that was a good time. Uh, I drove that truck so much. I just, I always, it was my daily driver. I never even, never even wanted to drive anything else. Like I never said, oh, I should buy something that, you know, as a beater. I, back then we never, I didn't know anyone that did that, you know, that had a daily driver and then their show truck. They, you just drove your truck and that was it. 2001, I think is, uh, 2000 to 2001 is when it, when the transformation happened. And what was funny is that no one knows this story really, except for a few people. Uh, they, will they will now, but um, <laughs> me and my good friend, Mark Brown, uh, who I'm still, I just talked to him today, actually. Um, he had a Zuzu Ombre body dropped on, on some voids and we had just got done doing our own little impromptu photo shoot at a cool area out near the university. And I was coming home and I was getting close to my house, like the, I was two lights away and I was going over a bridge and my four link bar snapped and it was a bag on bar set up. And what happened was the weld didn't go all the way around where it was welded to the bar, the, the uh, end link, you know, where the bushing and everything is. And it snapped off right there. And the whole rear end just tucked under and snapped the drive shaft and all kinds of crap. I mean, it was bad. And it was dragging, I was doing 50 and it was just dragging all around the, on the, you know, over the bridge. And so we put it on a flatbed, got it to the shop over to my buddy Anthony's shop at Raw. I was really mad. And uh, I said, that's it. I said, I'm going to do whole stuff that I've been thinking about. And I'd been watching like taking little things from here and there. Um, the deep dish wheels on Catch-22 came from Lance Martz's Dodge. The spare in the bed came from the very first issue, street trucks. The paint job came from all different types of trucks. I printed out like 16 different paint jobs that I liked. And I took this and this, 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 put it all together. I you know, printed them all out, gave them to the painter. Um, the side swing tailgate and everything, uh, Steve Nielsen made the, from Alter Images, made the whole one piece roll pan. I got the high tech LED. Um, I didn't know how it was all gonna come out. And then I found this guy that, you know, did really good paint work and he was not too far away and Todd Fisher and he's the one who ended up painting Catch-22 in his garage is where he did all his paint work uh, using he opened one window in his garage and then box fans underneath the door that was it and I will never forget I don't know this is probably pretty sad but I uh, the day that we went to pick up Catch-22 from the painter and it was done I still to this day can replay that drive home. We, we put it on the trailer. My wife was in the car with me. We we're in my dad's van, which he actually still has. And we were driving home and I still remember the minute I turned out of his driveway, I was looking in the rear view mirror at it. And I said, I've never had anything this nice. Like I've never had a paint job that looked like this. And I just knew at that point that I've got something. Show fast, that was funny. Um, I actually had a lot of issues. First, the first night, Friday night, I got locked in the truck. Uh, I couldn't get out. Yeah, it had door handles, but it had these billet flame handles and it had a cable and the cable had stretched and I had no backup. So that was the only way to get out was to pull in the cable. And I had this huge door panel with, you know, component sets in there and everything. You, you couldn't take the door panel off with the door closed. So I'm sitting there and we're pushing on it and you know someone's pushing on the outside and I'm just sitting there in the hotel parking lot trying to get out. And uh, finally, I forgot what happened. I think we, rolled, we finally got the window rolled down or something and I had to climb out. I was not this size. I was quite a bit bigger then. 
Uh, so it was entertaining. And then it rained that night and it rained really bad. And the gas filler was in the bed. And we didn't, you know, we never, the truck had never been out in a rainstorm like that. And so we, since it was finished and everything. So we, I went to go start it in the morning, it wouldn't start. And so the show was going and I had my wheel stop company selling, you know, Boyd rims there. And all my friends and club members went and set up my whole booth. And I had an enclosed trailer and, and uh, we had all the wheels out on display and the tables, but you know, those guys didn't know prices. They didn't know anything. And I'm sitting there at the hotel with a couple guys trying to get it running. Finally, you know, some, somebody's brother's cousin came along and was a Ford guy. And he says, oh yeah, he says, uh, he says, let me, he hit like a Schrader valve on the fuel rail and it got, it was spitting water. So water had gotten in the gas tank and he finally got it to where it would run and got all the water out. And we just got lucky that, you know, it, it all blew out through that fuel rail as I was trying to get it to run, you know, starting it up all the time. And then I remember I rolled into show fest and it was actually pretty cool because everyone was already inside show was going. And then here I come on Saturday morning at like, I think it was like almost noon. And everyone, I still remember people were running up to the fence and they were like, everyone just turned. And I was like, holy shit. <laughs> I was like, wow, okay. And uh, I pulled in and I pulled into the booth and man, I just was swarmed. The whole truck was swarmed the minute I pulled in. And it was an amazing feeling. That's when I won best to show there and everything. And it was, that was like a big, that was an awesome weekend. Yeah, this truck and me, I remember um, I flew out. We used to fly out to California Truck Jamboree uh, back in 99, I think it was. Yeah, we went out there for the first time and we went out as a club, as a group. And, um, and it was pretty cool. We went out there and went to MIC. We went to Budnick. We went to Sir Michael's. Uh, we, went to, we went to West Coast Choppers. And uh, what was funny is that I never saw the special. So I never saw the special on West Coast Choppers. So I was like, yeah, kind of cool bikes, but I had no interest. So I'm standing downstairs and everyone's upstairs buying their t-shirt. And Jesse James walks by and he's like, hey man, what's up? I'm like, nothing. He's like, can I help you with anything? You know, I said, no, my friends are getting t-shirts. Oh, okay. And I didn't know who he was. I just figured he just worked there. And, and all my friends were like, come down afterwards. Like, what'd he say? What'd he say? I'm like, what did who say? He says, Jesse, Jesse who? He says, the guy, the guy that, you know, I saw you talking to him. I'm like, who the hell is that? Like, I don't know, you know? And they're like, they're like, he's the owner. He's the, he's the man. He's the, I said, he just asked how I was doing. And I said, fine. I said, I'm waiting for you guys buying t-shirts. So I didn't even buy a t-shirt. Yeah. He's uh, so I met some interesting guys out there. Um, loved this truck, this truck. I never, you know, obviously you never know what life is going to bring at you and everything. And after uh, Heather and Joey had that truck, Brent got it. And I was good friends with Brent. He was in our club with his Ford. And I was, I, we saw him every year at SEMA and he let me, he took me for a ride in it. We drove down the strip and then he let me drive it. And when I was driving it, the radiator blew or the hose, the hose blew off the radiator in front of uh, MGM Grand, and we, we ended up in a Walgreens there. And the guy, it's funny because I think, I don't know if it was in this or in my truck, the guy from Hydraulics uh, was next to us in an Accord. He was like, I don't know, he's like, it's funny how things are, you know, he was hitting me up about it. And uh, man, I tried to buy this thing from Brent forever, forever. I had gone out there once and talked to him and tried and I would just text him offers and stuff, just be like, you know, this much or this much or this much. And, and then Richard got it and um, I was in touch with Sean Mahaney and I told him, I said, dude, I want to buy it. I said, you know, if you got, if you know anyone there and I, I actually took a picture of a stack of money and I sent it to Sean. I said, I'm ready. I said, I'm a real, real buyer. And uh, cause I was scared, you know, what they were going to do to the truck. Um, and I wanted to preserve it and everything. And, and then to see what they did, I just was like, wow. And I saw it go on eBay the first time and I was bidding on it. And I was like, 
it's gone, you know, and it was so high and it's like 70 something thousand. And, and then it's funny because we had a barbecue. I had a barbecue here at my house and um, invited a lot of guys from all different clubs and stuff. And we were talking about it because it had gone up. And then they said no one came through with it. And we were all discussing it, how impractical it is with a normal body drop and the big raised floor and, you know, can't fit in a trailer, no roof. I was like, ah, oh, yeah, I was like, yeah, it's so impractical, you know. And, and then like a week later, someone tags me, it's up on eBay. And I'm like, it's a 50 grand or best offer. And I was like, so I signed in and bid. And then my wife, I told my wife how much I bid. And she's like, that's not enough. She's like, if you had it, would you sell it for that? And I'm like, no. She goes, offer more. And I said, well, what, how much should I offer? She goes, you want, you've been wanting this truck forever. She's like, just what's the maximum you would feel comfortable paying? So I had to, and then I tried and I couldn't make another bid. They had to reject my offer first. And I was like, oh shit. So I signed in another account that I had and I bid on that account. And I bid higher and like an hour or two later, which felt like a year, uh, <laughs> they, they responded and said, I got it. And they took my deposit on PayPal. And I was holy shit. I was like, and this truck, the white one hadn't come home yet. And I was like, uh, I can't, like, this is not in the cards, you know, money wise. I, this was not, it was kind of like a curveball. And I was like, all right, I got to figure something out. I just got to, you know, do some more business real quick. And uh, anyway, we got it figured out and uh, ended up with the truck and I've just been smiling ever since. Like I tell everyone, I think I would, this is the one truck that I would probably pull the drivetrain out of and put it in another truck and I would mount this on the wall before I would sell it. I now truly understand Fester and what he does and everything else. I, I didn't really understand that stuff for a while. I respected it because I respect a lot of things that people do, most things. <laughs> And, you know, and then after having this truck, now I realize the, the draw and how good it is. And, and just to preserve that and not, not change it. You know, if you want to change it, just go build your own. It's funny that these two are together because the only reason why I have the white truck is because I couldn't buy crew cut. When I couldn't buy crew cut, I have it still saved in my Facebook messages with Sean Mahaney. Is that, you know, after sending the pictures of the money and saying, I want to buy a crew cut, blah, blah, blah. I actually, I think I had a Photoshop that I did where I cut the roof off a new Ford. Uh, something like that. And I was like, I'll build my own damn crew cut. Because what I did was I went out and I contacted everybody. You know, everyone's always like, oh, how do you choose a shop? Well, you know, sometimes I wonder about people, honestly. Because it's like, this isn't rocket science. You know, it really isn't. Talk to someone that has gone to that shop because chances are you're not the first guy to go. And one thing I know, I own my own business and you're never gonna make everyone happy. So you're always gonna have that bad story out there and you do need to hear it. But when you hear it, you need to hear both sides and then make it up, make your decision as to what was right, what was wrong. And then you know also if something happened, you know to watch for that on your build. Yeah, insomnia was a bad, bad deal for me. So in 2004, we got the Project Insomnia truck. And um, that was a project truck we did with Ford. Uh, it was part of their dollar program thing. And after all the success of Catch-22, that's what led us to do that and got us the opportunity for it. We flew up there Friday, drove it straight home. Sunday afternoon, I had the entire interior stripped on the Insomnia. And I was selling Catch to fund all the build on the new one. And back then that was a brand new body style, suspension, everything. So we didn't know anything about, you know, back then there was, you know, my buddy Anthony was not, really no one was using a pl computer plasma cutter or anything at the time. So it was just all, you know, handmade stuff, control arms and link bars and all that. Anyway, we, we had four hurricanes that year. And I still remember that we were suiciding the rear doors in the parking lot of his shop with a generator. And uh, that whole truck was just a nightmare. I tried to do so much because I had all this vision of what I wanted to do and I wanted to just, I was tired of seeing the bolt-on rims and you know, paint job or not even paint job, but bolt-on rims and a leather kit and call it good, you know, drop kit at SEMA. I was like, I'm gonna show these guys. 
and I didn't really have the budget. <laughs> I got to admit, now that I look at it, I was like, that's pretty crazy. And, and uh, I had a lot of help and um, we got it there and everything, but it didn't really, it drove, but it didn't have brakes. Um, I had paint cans holding up the seats in the back. And Ford, the Ford people came over, they loved the roof, obviously. <laughs> um, they loved the tailgate. Yeah, the tailgate flipped down and they retracted all the way into the bed. And that was really hard to do because the gas tank location and all that stuff. And the whole intention was I had a second LED brake light on the lip where the bed, uh, the bed floor rolled down. I had a second LED in there so you can you know, drive with the tailgate close, or whatever, retract it in. I didn't want it to be where, you know, it was just for loading and stuff. And they asked me, they said, what's the p purpose of that? I said, well, if you're ever putting anything in the bed or something, you know, you can, you know, that would be easier and everything. And they said, man, that's a really cool idea. We'd never seen that. And then I said, what do you think? He says, we would never do it. And I was like shocked. I was like, he just, no hesitation. I was like, why? And he says, because it would never pass a crash test. But life's a little different now, and uh, I'm busting my butt, so I went and bought it myself. So, yeah, so now the, the Navigator will be at SEMA this year. So the Navigator came mainly because of Ford, uh, basically not wanting to do the deal with me with the Expedition. So I said, you know what? I don't need you. I'll do it myself. I did it with this, you know, and, and uh, so I'm just, it's over at Jake's. It's got 12 miles on it. And uh, I'm looking forward to it. That's, I think that's gonna become kind of a daily driver. Um, you know, definitely it's really luxurious. I, I've gone through the days of no air condition and, and manual windows and all that. And certain things it's fine, but uh, I really like obviously kind of higher end stuff and keep everything really nice as you can kind of see. Um, the shop is another one of my, I don't know, it's going to change it. Hopefully it will be done in about a year completely. It'll be pretty awesome. Um, but I'm not stopping, you know, I'm, I'm at a point in life where I work hard and, you know, some people spend their money on stuff, you know, whatever it is, you know, whether it's partying, whether it's travel, whether it's one fancy car or something. And this is what I do. And, and I just look at it. You can't take it with you. You know, and I don't, I'm not, I'm not looking to have, you know, 50 cars or anything like that. I just want the cars that I am going to own and am going to drive and show are going to be really nice. I work hard for what I have. I've, you know, some people, it was funny, I was talking to someone that is pretty well known and they thought that I inherited my stores like from my family or something, my father. And I said, no. I said, I sold everything I had and I started my very first store by myself with my wife. I said, we started it. And I said, we didn't know any, not, not much about, about the business and we made it work and we just worked and worked and worked. And so one of my employees still to this day is just like, oh, it, you know, you got it made. And I'm like, you weren't here. You didn't experience, you know, there's no one, everyone says, you know, must be nice and this and that. And, and you know, it must be nice is, you know, five, ten years down the road, and in today's day and age, it is the easiest time in the world to make money. With your phone, the power of your phone, the power of the camera on it, the power of the internet reaching everybody, all you gotta do is put in the work. You know, you can do something, I mean, I've, I've seen, I listen to all these different people online and stuff, and then I, I don't listen all the time, but once in a while I'll get in a mood and I'll start listening to these motivational people and everything else. And it, you know, it's, it's easy. I mean, you buy something for one price and you sell it for a higher price. And you know, what my brother-in-law did is back in the day when he was in high school, he used to go to like Ross or something and buy large sneakers, like size 15 and up and put them on eBay because people in certain parts of the world or the U S can't find them. So if you live someplace where you can't find a certain product, you know, that's, you know, you can find it with eBay or whatever, something similar. A lot of people get in situations where they just keep doing the same thing over and over again. And it's like, if you want something to be different, you have to do something different. You know, you can't expect to build something. Like I couldn't expect to do this if I was just doing the same thing all the time. 
Bryce is not, he likes going in crew cut, but um, he asked me actually the other day, Daddy says, uh, you, you got so many cars. I said, well, they're not done yet. And he goes, yeah, but that's a lot to take care of. And I said, yeah. I said, well, hopefully they're all gonna be built right and it'll take less work to keep them going. I said, and then, you know, and he's, he's interested in it too. They, they're very interested in it. Uh, both of both of my kids are interested in it. Obviously my wife is very supportive. Um, you know, we don't take away from, you know, everyday life to, to do this. So, uh, and I realize I am in a fortunate position to be able to do it. And, and it's not that everybody can do it, but the fact that I can, I'm going to. Well, if you like that video, there's tons more. So click that uh, subscribe button and uh, share it away. Tell all your friends and look for new content coming. And stupidly, we painted the fender wells white. That was a mistake. Uh, so I'm not too good with power tools. And anyone that shakes my hand will realize that table saws are not quite my friend. <laughs> backyard, backyard body work. Oh, we could shave that, and next thing I know, it's just Bondo smeared over. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I'm like, I'm like, no, nah, I don't think that's right, you know? <laughs> no, I, unfortunately, I'm going to be the other way. I'm just going to keep going on. You're going to be like, hey, that's, that's <laughs> okay. you'll, have, you'll have plenty of footage, I'm sure. So.